Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy my video, please click the like button and share the video. It is the only way the YouTube algorithms really notices me. I will be very grateful to you. The Banished Entity, a story of friendship and terror. Scary Story, published by Scare Fiction. Read for you by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1, The Invitation. The wind howled a mournful tune as it whipped through the skeletal branches of the maples lining Elm Street. Inside the cozy glow of Sarah's bedroom, four friends huddled around a worn coffee table, mugs of lukewarm hot chocolate held in their hands. Rain lashed against the window panes, creating a rhythmic counterpoint to the crackling fire in the hearth. Sarah, the ever-optimistic one with a mane of fiery red hair, shivered dramatically. Anyone else feel like this town has gotten a little creepier lately? Across from her, Liam, the resident skeptic, snorted. Creepier? Sarah, it's called autumn. Leaves fall. Wind picks up. Ghosts and goblins come out to play. In people's imaginations, he punctuated his statement with a sardonic smile. Beside him, Maya, the group's resident artist, traced patterns on the condensation on her mug with a thoughtful frown. Actually, there have been some weird rumors going around school lately. Did you guys hear about Mrs. Abernathy's cat? A collective gasp rippled through the room. Mrs. Abernathy's fluffy Persian mittens had been a fixture in the neighborhood for years, his regal presence gracing every porch and windowsill. His sudden disappearance had cast a long shadow. Rumors are just rumors. Ethan, the quiet observer of the group, chimed in, his voice barely a whisper. He pushed his thick glasses up the bridge of his nose, his gaze flickering to the ornately framed picture of his family hanging on the wall. The silence stretched, broken only by the insistent drumming of the rain. Just then, the doorbell rang, a sharp, jarring sound that shattered the tension. Sarah jumped, nearly spilling her hot chocolate. I'll get it, she exclaimed, eager to break the unsettling mood. She hurried downstairs, the floorboards groaning under her weight, and flung open the door. On the porch stood a young woman, her face obscured by the shadows cast by the dying street lamp. In her hand, she clutched a thick envelope sealed with a black wax stamp. Sarah Miller? The woman's voice was low and husky tinged with a faint accent Sarah couldn't quite place. Sarah nodded, a shiver running down her spine despite the warm air escaping the house. This is for you, the woman said, extending the envelope. Her eyes, when they met Sarah's for a fleeting moment, seemed to hold an ancient wisdom, a flicker of something dark and knowing. Before Sarah could ask any questions, the woman turned and vanished into the storm, leaving Sarah clutching the cold, heavy envelope in her trembling hand. Back upstairs, Sarah placed the envelope on the coffee table. The ornate wax seal gleamed in the firelight, sending an unsettling thrill through the group. Who is it from? Liam asked, his skepticism momentarily forgotten. Sarah carefully broke the seal and unfolded the thick, parchment-like paper. As she scanned the elegant script, a gasp escaped her lips. It's from my Aunt Amelia, she whispered, her voice filled with a mixture of excitement and trepidation. The letter spoke of a secluded cabin retreat in the mountains, inherited from a distant relative. Aunt Amelia invited Sarah and a few friends for a weekend getaway, a chance to escape the monotony of suburban life and reconnect with nature. A tense silence followed the reading. The invitation, nestled amongst the swirling autumn leaves just outside their window, felt more like a summons than a friendly offer. So, are we going? Maya asked, her voice barely a whisper. Sarah looked around at her friends, their faces etched with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. A shiver danced down her spine, but a spark of adventure ignited in her eyes. 
Who's up for a mountain mystery? Chapter 2. Whispers in the Pines Sarah's question hung in the air, heavy with the promise of an unsettling adventure. Liam scoffed, but a flicker of excitement danced in his eyes. Maya, ever the artist, was already sketching the potential of a remote cabin nestled amongst the mountains. Ethan, however, remained silent, his gaze fixed on the flickering flames in the hearth. Despite a lingering unease, the lure of escape from their predictable lives proved irresistible. A weekend getaway hidden amongst the whispering pines seemed a welcome break from the monotony of suburban life. So, a few days later, they found themselves piled into Sarah's beat-up jeep, a map clutched in Ethan's white-knuckled grip. The journey began innocently enough. The familiar sprawl of their town gave way to rolling hills dotted with farms and quaint villages. As they ventured deeper, however, the landscape shifted. The road narrowed, winding like a serpent through dense forests. Sunlight struggled to pierce the thick canopy overhead, casting long, unsettling shadows across the path. The air grew thick and humid, carrying a strange metallic tang that burned Sarah's nostrils. The radio sputtered, then died with a final hiss, leaving them in an unnerving silence punctuated only by the rhythmic crunch of tires on gravel and the mournful cry of unseen birds. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with fiery hues of orange and red, they finally reached their destination. A faded sign, barely visible against the encroaching darkness, pointed down a narrow, overgrown path. Sarah navigated the jeep down the treacherous road, the tires kicking up dust and scattering startled crows. Through the thick undergrowth, they finally glimpsed the cabin. A weathered wooden structure nestled precariously on the edge of a steep cliff. Moonlight cast an eerie glow on the peeling paint and boarded up windows, giving it an abandoned air. The surrounding forest, a dense tangle of pines, pressed close its silence broken only by the sighing of the wind through the branches. As they stepped out of the car, a cold gust of wind whipped around them, carrying with it the scent of damp earth and something else, a faint, acrid odor that sent shivers down Sarah's spine. Unpacking their belongings, they found an unsettling chill had settled within the cabin, despite the crackling fire in the rusty hearth. That night, the silence was broken by an unsettling symphony of strange noises. The floorboards creaked and groaned as if under unseen footsteps. The wind howled like a banshee outside, rattling the old windows with a ferocity that seemed unnatural. Sleep came in fits and starts, punctuated by unsettling dreams and the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes. In the morning, Sarah discovered a book tucked away on a dusty shelf, an old leather-bound journal with cryptic symbols etched onto its cover. A chill ran down her spine as she realized none of them remembered seeing it the night before. The invitation, the cryptic silence, the unsettling happenings of the night the weekend getaway was starting to feel less like an innocent adventure and more like a descent into something unknowable. Chapter 3 Whispers from the Past the weight of the unsettling events hung heavy in the air as the friends huddled around the breakfast table, the silence broken only by the rhythmic clinking of forks against plates. Sarah, pale and drawn, clutched the leather-bound journal in her trembling hands. This wasn't here yesterday, she said, her voice barely a whisper. Ethan peered over her shoulder, his brow furrowed in concentration. The symbols... On the cover seemed to writhe and twist in the morning light, sending a jolt of unease through him. Liam scoffed. Probably belonged to whoever owned this place before it became a creepy weekend getaway. But the skepticism in his voice lacked its usual conviction. Maya, ever the pragmatist, suggested they explore further, hoping to find an explanation for the strange occurrences. With a mix of trepidation and morbid curiosity, they embarked on a thorough inspection of the cabin. Loose floorboards creaked under their feet, 
and dust motes danced in the pale shafts of sunlight filtering through the grime-coated windows. In a dusty corner behind a pile of moth-eaten blankets, they discovered a hidden compartment. Inside, nestled amongst cobwebs and forgotten trinkets, lay a collection of ornately carved wooden figures and a leather-bound diary with faded ink scrawled across its brittle pages. A collective gasp escaped their lips as they recognized the symbols on the diary cover the same ones etched on the mysterious journal Sarah had found. As Sarah cautiously pried it open, the musty scent of aged paper filled the air. The diary entries, penned in a flowing hand, belonged to a woman named Abigail who resided in the cabin decades ago. The initial entries spoke of a peaceful life amidst the mountains, filled with long walks and the comforting rhythm of nature. But a chilling shift occurred midway through the diary. Abigail started writing about strange occurrences, flickering lights, disembodied whispers, and the feeling of being watched. Her words spoke of a growing sense of dread, a fear of something lurking just beyond the veil of reality. Then came the most unsettling revelation. Abigail described a series of occult rituals she performed, desperate pleas to appease an entity she called the Watcher in the Woods. The final entry, scrawled in a panicked hand, spoke of a terrible mistake, of unleashing something far more powerful than she could control. A cold dread settled over the group as they finished reading. The seemingly innocent cabin now held a dark secret, a chilling connection to the unsettling events they had experienced. The playful banter and adventurous spirit of their arrival had been replaced by a heavy silence, punctuated by accusations and frantic whispers. Liam, the ever-skeptical one, scoffed. This is just some crazy woman's ramblings. There's no such thing as... His voice trailed off as a sudden gust of wind slammed a window shut, plunging the room into an eerie darkness. A low growl, primal and guttural, echoed from somewhere within the dense forest surrounding the cabin. In that moment, the line between fiction and terrifying reality blurred. The friends exchanged panicked glances, the unsettling truth hanging heavy in the air. They were not alone. Chapter 4 Whispers in the Dark the unearthly growl hung in the air long after it faded, leaving a chilling silence in its wake. The friends huddled together, eyes wide with terror, the diary clutched in Sarah's trembling hands. Playful exploration of the cabin had morphed into a horrifying realization. They were trapped in a place with a dark past, and whatever lurked in the woods was anything but harmless. Ethan, usually the quiet observer, spoke first, his voice barely a whisper. We need to get out of here. But the storm outside raged with renewed fury, the wind howling like a banshee, and the rain lashing against the windows with relentless force. Escape, at least for now, seemed impossible. A tense silence stretched between them, broken only by the rhythmic crackle of the fire in the hearth. Maya, ever the rational one, finally voiced what they all feared. Abigail's diary. What if? What if it's true? Liam, his bravado shaken, scoffed. True. It's a bunch of nonsense. Ghosts and rituals. Come on, guys. Get a grip. His voice, however, lacked its usual conviction. Sarah, desperation burning in her eyes, looked at the diary again. The words seemed to leap off the page, a chilling invitation. Driven by a morbid curiosity, she blurted out the unthinkable. What if we could appease it, like Abigail tried? The suggestion hung in the air like a curse. A tense silence followed, broken only by Ethan's sharp intake of breath. Are you crazy, Sarah? Liam exclaimed. That stuff is just but a seed of doubt had been planted. As they huddled around the flickering fire, Sarah hesitantly shared details from the diary about the ritual Abigail performed. 
It seemed simple enough burning herbs, chanting a specific phrase, and leaving an offering. The idea of appeasing the entity seemed ludicrous, yet the fear gnawing at them was undeniable. Perhaps, just perhaps, a harmless ritual could undo the damage done, send the Watcher back to whatever realm it belonged to. Despite their lingering skepticism, a desperate hope flickered in their eyes. With trembling hands, they gathered the necessary ingredients, dried herbs found in a dusty cabinet, a ceremonial cup carved from weathered wood, and a small silver locket left behind by one of the cabin's previous inhabitants. As darkness descended, they gathered in the center of the room, the flickering firelight casting grotesque shadows on the walls. Sarah, her voice barely a whisper, began to chant the words penned in the diary. The air grew thick and heavy, a sense of oppressive silence pressing down on them. Halfway through the chant, the flames in the hearth sputtered and died, plunging them into an inky darkness. A primal shriek, unlike any animal sound they had ever heard, echoed through the cabin. Glowboards creaked and groaned, as if under the weight of an unseen creature. Panic surged through them. They stumbled back, knocking over furniture in their desperate scramble to escape the unseen entity their curiosity had unleashed. In the chaos, a cold gust of wind swept through the room, extinguishing the remaining candles and plunging them into a terrifying darkness. A disembodied whisper, filled with malice and ancient power, echoed in their ears. You have awakened. The wrong guest. The sound of heavy footsteps, slow and deliberate, approached them from the shadows. Trapped in the dark cabin, the friends huddled together, their initial curiosity replaced with a bone-chilling fear. They had tampered with forces beyond their understanding, and the consequences were about to unfold in the terrifying darkness. Chapter 5. Fractures in the Dark The cabin echoed with the sound of ragged breaths and terrified whimpers. Blinded by darkness, the friends fumbled around, bumping into each other in their desperate search for an exit. Sarah stumbled, her hand brushing against a cold, damp wall. Panic clawed at her throat as she realized they were trapped, prisoners in their own makeshift ritual chamber. The heavy footsteps seemed to circle them, the unseen entity toying with their terror. Then, with a sudden crash, silence descended. The suffocating darkness pressed in on them, amplifying every creak of the floorboards and every rustle of leaves against the window panes. Exhaustion finally overcame their fear, and they collapsed onto the cold, hard floor. Sleep, when it came, was a battlefield. Disturbing nightmares, fueled by their deepest anxieties, plagued them. Sarah dreamt of endless darkness, where unseen eyes watched her with malicious intent. Liam relived his childhood fear of enclosed spaces, trapped in a suffocating coffin. Maya found herself lost in a maze of her own insecurities, her artwork morphing into grotesque caricatures that mocked her. Dawn broke, filtering through the boarded-up windows in a sickly gray light. The nightmares of the night clung to them like cobwebs, leaving them drained and disoriented. As they recounted their horrific dreams, a seed of doubt began to take root. Maybe this is all in our heads, Liam ventured, a sliver of hope in his voice. But the accusation in his eyes landed on Sarah, the one who had initiated the ritual. Are you trying to say it's my fault? She retorted, her voice laced with anger and fear. No one's blaming anyone, Ethan interjected, his voice calmer than the others, but his eyes held a haunted look. However, the trust that once bound them was fraying at the edges. The entity, it seemed, wasn't content with just terrorizing them. It was exploiting their vulnerabilities, whispering doubts and accusations in their ears. The cabin itself seemed to play a role. Strange occurrences plagued them throughout the day, objects vanishing and reappearing in different places. 
Whispers carried on wisps of wind, and shadows that seemed to writhe and twist in the flickering lamplight. As tensions rose, old arguments resurfaced, fueled by paranoia and fear. Maya accused Liam of always prioritizing bravado over reason. Liam, in turn, pointed out Maya's tendency to be overly dramatic. Sarah, caught in the middle, felt increasingly isolated and burdened by the weight of their shared fear. Nightfall arrived, cloaked in a heavy silence, broken only by the howling wind outside. The flickering fire offered scant comfort as they huddled together, the once playful camaraderie replaced by a tense suspicion. The entity's presence seemed to grow stronger with each passing hour, its whispers slithering through the cracks in their dwindling sanity. Sleep, when it came, brought no respite. This time, the nightmares were shared visions, a horrifying creature with glowing eyes and razor-sharp claws stalking them through the dark corridors of the cabin. As they woke, gasping for breath, a horrifying realization dawned on them. It wasn't just their minds the entity was toying with. It was manipulating their perception, turning their friends into foes and leaving them isolated and vulnerable. The fight for survival had become a fight against their own fractured sense of reality. Chapter 6 Claws in the Dark Dawn arrived, a pale sliver of light struggling to pierce the dense fog that had descended upon the mountains. The air crackled with a sense of impending doom, and the silence was broken only by the mournful cry of unseen crows. The nightmares had shattered the fragile bond of trust they had shared. Accusatory glances and muttered insults hung heavy in the air, a testament to the entity's insidious manipulation. As they huddled around a meager breakfast of stale cereal and lukewarm water, the lights flickered and died, plunging the cabin into an inky blackness. Panic surged through them, punctuated by the deafening roar of a sudden windstorm that slammed against the windows with the force of a battering ram. The storm's fury seemed to mirror the turmoil within them. The cabin groaned and creaked like a tortured soul, and the floorboards vibrated with each monstrous gust of wind. Rain lashed against the roof, sounding like a thousand tiny drum beats heralding their doom. With a sickening crack, a large branch pierced through a window, showering the room with shards of glass. A wave of terror washed over them as the wind howled its macabre symphony, carrying with it a chilling whisper that seemed to come from all directions at once. You cannot escape. The entity, emboldened by the storm's fury, unleashed its full force. Shadows danced on the walls, morphing into grotesque shapes that seemed to mock their helplessness. A bone-chilling cold seeped into the room, sapping the life force from their bodies. Suddenly, a blood-curdling scream shattered the deafening roar of the wind. Maya, her face pale with terror, pointed at the corner of the room where a dark, swirling vortex had materialized. From it emerged a creature of pure nightmare, a hulking figure with glowing red eyes and razor-sharp claws that dripped with an inky black substance. Ethan, propelled by a primal urge to protect, lunged at the creature, a desperate cry erupting from his lips. In a flash of movement, the entity slammed Ethan into the wall, the force of the blow knocking him unconscious. A choked sob escaped Sarah's throat as she watched in horror, the creature's malevolent gaze fixing on her next. Liam, fueled by a sudden burst of adrenaline, lunged for a heavy metal candlestick, his face contorted in a mask of fury. The entity, its attention momentarily diverted, turned towards him. Time seemed to slow down as Liam swung the candlestick with all his might, connecting with a sickening thud on the creature's skeletal arm. The entity shrieked in pain, a sound that seemed to shake the very foundation of the cabin. But the attack served only to enrage it further. With a snarl that echoed through the room, the creature lunged for Liam, 
its claws tearing through his clothes as he stumbled back. Sarah, caught between fear and a desperate need to help, snatched the poker from the fireplace. In a moment of blind courage, she charged at the entity, her heart hammering against her ribs. The creature turned its glowing eyes towards her, a cruel amusement flickering within them. Just as the entity raised its claws to strike, a deafening crack echoed through the room. A massive oak tree, uprooted by the storm's fury, crashed through the roof, pinning the creature beneath its heavy branches. Sarah, Liam, and the unconscious Ethan were showered with debris, but miraculously unharmed. The wind seemed to howl in frustration, the entity thrashing like a trapped beast. But the fallen tree held firm, trapping it in a prison of wood and earth. In the sudden silence that followed, Sarah and Liam clung to each other, their breaths coming in ragged gasps. They had survived the entity's attack, but at what cost? The victory tasted hollow, the darkness outside mirroring the uncertainty that gnawed at their hearts. As they looked at the unconscious Ethan, a new fear crept in. Was he simply injured, or had the entity already claimed him as its pawn? The storm raged on outside, but the real battle had just begun. They had to get help, escape this wretched place, before the entity found a way to break free and claim its vengeance. But with the storm raging and Ethan critically injured, they found themselves trapped in a terrifying dance with the unknown, the line between reality and nightmare blurred beyond recognition. Chapter 7 Whispers in the Dead of Night The fallen tree lay across the cabin, a precarious barrier between them and the thrashing entity beneath. Sarah knelt beside Ethan, checking for a pulse. Relief flooded her as she felt his weak but steady heartbeat. Liam, his face bruised and bloody, stared at the creature with a mix of terror and defiance. We need to get out of here, Liam rasped, his voice raw. But how? We're cut off from the world, and that thing. He trailed off, his gaze flicking to the entity beneath the fallen oak. Hope flickered in Sarah's eyes. The diary, maybe there's something in there, a way to stop it. She scrambled to her feet and rummaged through the debris, finally pulling out the leather-bound journal. Huddled together by the dying embers of the fireplace, they pored over the faded pages. Sarah skimmed through Abigail's desperate pleas for appeasement, her heart sinking with each passing line. Then. A passage jumped out at her, its words underlined with frantic urgency. The ritual is not the answer. The Watcher feeds on fear. Only through courage and defiance can its hold be broken. A spark of hope ignited. Courage and defiance? But how? They were three battered humans, facing a creature of pure nightmare. Liam scoffed but Sarah clutched the diary tighter. There has to be more, she pleaded, her voice trembling. As if in answer, her eyes fell on a faded sketch amongst the diary entries. It depicted a circle of symbols, vaguely resembling those carved on the wooden figurines they had found hidden in the cabin. Below the sketch, a single cryptic sentence speak the words of binding and banish the shadows. A plan, desperate and uncertain, began to form in Sarah's mind. The storm had subsided, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. The moon, a pale sliver in the inky sky, bathed the clearing around the cabin in an otherworldly glow. With a determined glint in her eye, Sarah gathered the wooden figurines and placed them in a circle around the fallen tree. Liam, help me move some of these branches, she instructed her voice surprisingly steady. We need to create a space, a boundary. Together, they wrestled with the heavy branches, their movements fueled by a desperate hope. Finally, they managed to clear a small area around the base of the fallen tree, exposing the entity's writhing form. Sarah, clutching the diary, took a deep breath, 
Fear still gnawed at her, but a newfound resolve steeled her nerves. She spoke the words, scrawled across the faded pages, her voice ringing out into the night. The words sounded foreign on her tongue, yet they carried an air of power, a defiance against the unseen forces that held them captive. As she spoke, the symbols on the figurines glowed with an ethereal light. Forming a barrier around the trapped creature, the entity shrieked in fury, the sound echoing through the silent woods. Cabin itself seemed to shudder under the assault of its power. With a final earth-shaking growl, the entity's form began to dissipate, dissolving into wisps of dark smoke that were sucked into the circle of symbols. Exhausted but triumphant, Sarah collapsed onto the damp earth. Silence descended, heavy and almost suffocating. Had they truly banished the entity? Or was this just a temporary reprieve? A soft moan broke the silence. Ethan stirred, his eyes fluttering open. Relief washed over Sarah, momentarily eclipsing the nagging doubt that burrowed deep within her. They had survived the night, but at what cost? As they helped Ethan to his feet, a chilling realization dawned on them. The diary mentioned a binding, not a complete expulsion. Did a part of the entity still linger, waiting for an opportunity to strike again? The cabin, once a symbol of curiosity and adventure, now reeked of darkness and despair. They had escaped with their lives, but the experience had left an indelible mark on their souls. As they prepared to leave the clearing, Sarah stole one last glance at the circle of symbols, glowing faintly in the moonlight. A flicker of movement within the circle sent a shiver down her spine. Had they truly banished the entity, or had they simply created a cage, a temporary holding cell for a monster they could never fully destroy? Chapter 8 Echoes in the Pines The descent from the mountain was a blur. Exhausted and shaken, they stumbled through the dense forest, the weight of their ordeal pressing down on them. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig sent shivers down their spines. Reaching their car, they piled in, not bothering to speak. The silence was heavy with unspoken questions and a lingering dread. They drove back to civilization, the once familiar landscape now tinged with an unsettling darkness. Back in the safety of their suburban homes, they tried to resume their lives. But the experience in the cabin had irrevocably changed them. Nightmares plagued their sleep, filled with echoes of the entity's chilling laughter and the suffocating darkness of the cabin. Their once vibrant friendships were strained, fractured by the fear and suspicion that had festered within the cabin walls. Casual jokes felt hollow, replaced by a guarded silence. They held on to their shared secret, a burden that bound them and yet distanced them from everyone else. Months passed. Slowly, the nightmares became less frequent, the memories dulled by the routines of everyday life. But the experience left an indelible mark on their souls. One evening, Sarah received a call from Liam. His voice, usually filled with bravado, was laced with a tremor of fear. Meet me at the park, he said, his voice barely a whisper. Sarah arrived at the park to find Liam sitting on a bench, his gaze fixed on a weathered oak tree. A cold dread settled in her stomach as she remembered the entity's form, trapped beneath a fallen oak. I... I had a dream, Liam began, his voice barely audible. The same dream. The creature, trapped beneath the tree, but, but it was laughing. A shiver ran down Sarah's spine. The entity might have been banished, but was its laughter a sign of victory or a chilling promise? In that moment, under the watchful gaze of the oak trees, a horrifying truth dawned on them the entity might be gone, but the darkness it awakened within the cabin, within themselves, might linger forever. Sarah looked at Liam, their eyes locked in a silent understanding. The escape from the cabin might have been physical, but the true battle, 
the battle against the shadows within had only just begun. The wind rustled through the leaves, a sound that once seemed innocuous now sending shivers down their spines. As they walked away from the park, arms linked in a silent pact, a single question echoed in the air, unanswered and terrifying. Were they truly free, or were they simply waiting for the next whisper in the pines?